Welcome to session 11, Forms and False Work of the KYTC Structural Inspection Level 1 class. In this class, we're going to talk about substructure form work, false work, as well as superstructure, stay in place decking, and overhang forms. So, form work and false work are different. Form work is the temporary structure or mold used to retain plastic or fluid concrete in its designated shape until it hardens. As you can see from these pictures, we've got form work, the yellow uh, material that is supporting the concrete to be placed for this pier cap. Below it, you see the gray towers. Those are considered false work. They are there to support the formwork. The picture to the right, you see a mold that is used for a concrete bridge rail. That is considered formwork because it's used to hold back, hold the concrete itself. So false work, I kind of mentioned it earlier, is the temporary construction used to support vertical loads for a structure until it becomes self-supporting. So the picture on the left, you see the false work of those towers used to support the top slab, which is to be built for this uh, wagon barrel box culvert. To the right, you see false work that is being used to actually support the beams uh, for one of the lake bridges. These were utilized to help jack and support the beams during placement. So formwork design, it must be designed to withstand the fluid pressures of the concrete. So in its design, it needs to have all the dead loads of concrete as well as steel, and it also has to have a live load allowance. Check the specifications to see what live load is specified if there is one. Now, the design and construction of all formwork and false work is entirely the responsibility of the contractor. Even if the engineer requests it and approves it, it is still the responsibility of the contractor to ensure its accuracy and conformance. So 6010312 states contractors shall submit formwork designs when requested. If the engineer feels they need to see these designs, their review and approval, as I've stated again, does not relieve the contractor of any responsibility for obtaining satisfactory result. So the contractor is mainly responsible. They design it, they need to build it, they need to make sure it's built correctly. As the inspector, you should check the dimensions and elevations as early as possible. You need to be out there as they're building it to make sure it's built correctly. It's got the right bracing as designed. We need to be on the contractor to be a good housekeeper. We want to keep it clean. We want to keep everything sturdy. We want to keep everything tight. Uh, check any clearances for roadway or railroads, especially. Uh, if you've got steel beams, make sure we're getting, if it's designed to be four foot, if it's designed to be six foot in depth, make sure we're checking that. Check to see if it needs to be heated or if it needs protection, depending on what time of year it is. Check the formwork periodically, especially during the placement of concrete. Forms should be observed throughout the progress of the pour to detect any excessive deflections or apparent weakness. You want to look for any mortar that's slipping out, or if you see any bulging, that is an, a sign something is going wrong. Go talk to the contractors. We've had issues of formwork blowout. Uh, we had a pier cap blowout on the interstate. We've had decks. Uh, form works fall through. It happens. We need to make sure we check it and get it corrected before it happens. So like I said, forms are to be mortar tight. You don't want mortar coming out of it. Any shrinkage of lumber may cause openings in it. These need to be sealed. Uh, also, in your form work, make sure they've got form oil and they're wetted with water to make sure it's going to minimize shrinking. Wa it does not have to be watertight, just mortar tight. So steel forms should be carefully inspected to see that the individual sections line up properly and they present a smooth surface and are mortar tight. You need to make sure they have the shape that they're supposed to. Forms with open joints will allow mortar to escape through, which results in an extra work the contractor is going to have to grind down. We've had issues where culvert steel forms for culverts have been out and they've been too wavy and we have specifications for straightness. So let's move into deck forms. Deck forms are used to support the bridge deck. Uh, they support the concrete between adjacent structural members until it hardens sufficiently to stand on its own. I've been building bridges since 2006. I have never seen a wooden deck form. I 
here we still have one contractor in the state that uses them but from looking at the bottom bridges I know that's the way we used to go but they are used to control slab thickness they must be mortar tight and sufficiently rigid to support the concrete without distorting under the load here is a picture of a wood form that's the way we used to do it now here is a picture of a stay in place metal deck forms this is what I've seen ever since I've been building bridges from what I can hear from people who have been around, we switched to these early 90s. So there's mainly the two different kinds. There's the stay-in-place decking, which is permanent, or removable, which is either wood or steel. Uh, the deck form plans must be submitted to the engineer for approval. These stay in the section office for approval. They do not come to central office. The engineer is looking to make sure they have the right width, and the gauge is calculated, and it's just a, yes, we've got them, and put them in the file. So the forms are not are attached to the beam. On concrete beams, uh, you can see the picture at the top is for concrete beams. That's the pre-stress. It's supported by steel inserts cast into the top of the beam and the metal angles that go on it. So you see the metal angle right here that is cast into the beam and then the angle that's welded to it. So that is for pre-stress beams. For structural steel beams, down here at the bottom, you can see this strap that is across the girder that just lays on there freely. And then out beside it is the angle which gets welded to it. You can see this line right here which is welded. So the first step in installing decking, you've got to mark the grid lines and get the X dimensions on your bridges. So if you look at the one, usually the last sheet in your bridge plans, it's going to give you the X dimension. You can see center line of beams and then you can see these grid lines which are here and they're numbered. So each one of these grid locations has a corresponding beam and a location on it. Those, with those locations, you get shots in the center of the beam at each one of those crossing lines. These shots are then recorded on the X dimensions where they're in the plans, which this needs to be turned in as part of the as-built plans for this job. You put in the X dimension for the top of the beam, and then you calculate the dimension. That dimension is the thickness of your deck. We need to make sure that that deck stays between 8 and 10 inches. So we adjust our deck pans to stay within that range. You never want to be below 8, but we want to stay. We don't want to get above 10 either, but if you do get above 10, we need to check and make sure that the bridge and the beams can take that extra dead load. So the next step is you weld the stay-in-place angles to the clips to match the necessary X dimensions. And then you lay the stay-in-place decking on the angles. Make sure it is screwed securely before you walk on it. And contractors need to be tied off for safety before, as they're installing these. So here you see a steel job. You can see the straps that are over there. Uh, the gentleman here is welding on the angles. And you can see back behind it, they are placing the stay-in-place decking. Here's a final product. You can see this has been laid. The styrofoam is in there. We'll talk about that later. Uh, this duct tape is used to hold it in. It's just windy days on this lake job. You can see the straps laid over the beams and the angles in place. So when they're placing the decking, it needs to be placed in the direction of the pour. So if it's placed in the opposite, the weight pushing down the decking might open up that seam and then allow mortar to pour out. Remember, these need to be mortar tight. So to keep them mortar tight, they need to be placed in the direction of the pour. So frequently when forms or false work fail, it's there's a difference or a different kind of reasoning. More or less, a lot of it's in the details. If it's designed correctly, it should stand. We've got to watch over it. We've got to make sure we keep an idea of all the loading and we have to watch the formwork as concrete is being placed. Shock and vibration, especially if we're on a bridge deck with a bid well or even traffic going by, can be caused failure. You've got forms and other continuously supported structures must be provided for bearing. And then wedges of posts to counteract compression under loads must be done in, under proper supervision so as to pre previously properly assembled form support is not. So here's a picture of that culvert I was telling you earlier where the steel forms were bad and bent. 
this contractor spent about two weeks going back and grinding this to get to the flatness and smoothness requirements of our specifications. Here you can see a picture of a beam that's got the angle welded on it. Uh, you can see the angle there and you can see the clips on the back side here that were cast into the beam. So the next thing is to install the styrofoam. Styrofoam is there because we don't want the added dead load of the concrete in those corrugations. That corrugations is what gives us the strength. So we put, come back with a styrofoam as a lightweight alternative that doesn't react with the concrete. And then also make sure your stirrups penetrate into the lower deck for composite design. It's stirrups or the Nelson studs on steel beams. Here's a picture of some steel beams with the straps with the Nelson studs to extend in that bottom deck, the styrofoam for weight, and you can also see the overhang clips, which are clipped onto the back side of the beam and extended out. As I said during a structural steel video, nothing should be welded to these structural beams in the field. Anything that is welded should be done in the shop unless shown specifically on the plans. So, question. All clips, hangers, and other precast beam hardware should be zinc or epoxy coated. True or false? That is true. So if you look at specification 601213F, paragraph 4, you can see that precast beam hardware needs to be zinc or epoxy coated. More or less just like everything in our deck. It's got to be zinc or epoxy. Zinc is another word for galvanization. So here's a picture on the underside. Is this good or bad? Looking at this, it looks just like water. You're going to see this on a job. If you start to see mortar drip through, that's when we have issues. Notify the contractor immediately. But if you're just seeing water dripping through, that's good. That means they're wetting the deck. They're wetting the steel. They're making sure that everything is wetted out ahead of the pour. Here's an overhang jack and some formwork. Make sure this is built correctly. Make sure it's supported right. And then on overhang jacks, we need to have those submitted prior to construction for approval. Here they're submitting the deck rail on the old bridge and you see all these trucks. What do you think could go wrong here? It could go wrong of vibrations in the existing bridge causing the rail for the bid well to move which would cause uh, corrugations or bumps in our deck. It would not be a good smooth riding deck. So the contractor needs to design their formwork in order to ensure they're getting a good final product. So the overhangs get turned in similar to this one. Um, we need to have the weight of the load, the live load, the screed load, and then we need to know what are the brackets spaced at in their calculations. These come into my office, the central office construction. We review them and we will send them back. What the inspector needs is this drawing. This is going to tell you that everything that these brackets, how they're spaced, how they're constructed, and how they need to be built. So you need, as the inspector, need to be able to make sure that they are building this as per the plans. They'll submit the type of overhang brackets they're using, and then ultimately it's your job to make sure they're built as per the plans. Here's one on a steel beam. The issue with this, it's resting directly on the beam. It's not an issue to us, but it's extra work for the contractor and the paint contractor because they're going to have to come back and grind that back to repaint it. And also make sure those are toward the bottom of the beam. You don't want them up in the mid middle of the web. It's not as uh, structurally sound up there. You never want to drill in any pre-stressed beam. We stressed that in that video. That's why we need these overhangs submitted before the beam drawings. As you can see here, this contractor had their overhangs placed, but they were not in the right location. So they came back and drilled in these over other overhang jacks. That is unacceptable. There are other methods to do it. They can attach those overhang brackets to the stirrups and that way that would support it rather than drilling holes. This is proper. You, you want to see the straps and welded and everything is good. And then finally, one of the last formworks in a deck issue is you need to have some provisions for if you have to stop your pour, whether that's a phase construction pour or an emergency stop due to rain or breakdowns, this has got to have a plan in place for this that the contractor can quickly get in and put in a header. That is it for form work and false work. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the page for more videos, and I hope to see you in class one day.